It's opportunist. There's nothing personal about these stocks. I love Tesla uh, as a company. I love Tesla as a stock. I trade Tesla long. I trade Tesla short. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's just taking advantage of channels. There's no such thing as a bad model. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey, everybody. Good evening, guys, and welcome to uh, another edition, the Wednesday edition of the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good day. So let's rewind 24 hours ago. Um, great job by the Bulls, right? We talked about it last night in the video. Uh, great job by the Bulls. Uh, they held this you know, really big, long um, rising wedge, which was great. I mean, absolutely great. They reclaimed the, um, the 150. They claimed the 100. And the one thing we talked about last night's video was they had a couple of chances to reclaim the 50-day moving average, which is, again, a very, very important level. Uh, the queues actually went green twice yesterday and got rejected. And the last thing we wanted to see yesterday, kind of, we kind of rewinded 24 hours, was kind of a sell-off into the close. And unfortunately, we got that sell-off on the close. It wasn't anything huge. But the moral of the story was that we did get rejected off the 50-day moving average. And the question of today was, well, was, this, was there going to be a part two, right? Was there going to be uh, another day that the bulls are going to attempt uh, to reclaim the 50-day moving average? Because again, the longer, if you remember, every single time we spoke about it, even going back to, you know, even going back to uh, January and March, right? Even going to March 1st. The longer we started building below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability we were going to flush. And yesterday was the day one close. Uh, today would have been day two. Um, and we got our answer very, very quickly right away. So uh, this morning, yet yeah, CPI numbers come out. Very, very ugly numbers. And we already knew the line in the sand from yesterday's low was going to be this 319 level. We talked about in last night's video that we knew going forward that was going to be the line in the sand. And very, very quickly... You started seeing the great job that we did yesterday, the Qs did yesterday to reclaiming levels. They tried again today a couple of times, right? The only difference was there was absolutely no, there was no aggression, right? Zero aggression uh, in any attempts on the rallies for the whole day. And then it, once they finally took out the previous day's low, it was it. I mean, that was absolutely it. It looked like the bulls uh, completely gave up. And the interesting part about Today's session for about 75% of the day, and we talked about this uh, in the webinar, and I talked about this um, on Twitter a few times, that although the queues took out the previous day's low, most stocks at one point, right, at one point of the day, were still above the previous day's low. We're like, well, it's kind of odd, so we're probably going to get a little bit more clarity tomorrow. So I went to uh, run a couple of errands around 2 o'clock. I was done for the day. And by the time I, you know, looked at the tape, I said, okay, they gave it up very, very aggressively, um, very aggressively, closed at the lows. And all majority of those names that were still holding yesterday's lows as opposed to the Qs, well, they were below the yesterday's lows. And a lot of names are very, very close or imminent, right, uh, to challenging the previous day's low as well. And if you look at the theory, and, and again, my whole theory of stocks go from supply to supply and demand to demand. That's the whole point of the PS60 theory. Well, again, this is day two below the 50-day moving average. Uh, not only did we reclaim, when I say we, with the, the bears, the bears reclaimed this level. Now, again, if you just look at your eyeballs, you can see there's no, there's nothing in between uh, the close today, the 316 close today, and the lows today with 316 to the next support zone. Again, because stocks go from demand to demand, to demand, to demand. So it does look, look like, you know, based on, you know, you can go through a lot of charts today. Uh, it does look like we are on a magnet to this uh, 31250 level. Well, you know, will it confirm today's, tomorrow's levels uh, and, and, and test that level? Yeah, it's to be determined, but at least that's what it looks like. And it's very, very hard to turn around, uh, turn around when you're doing your chart work tonight. I don't, I don't care how big of a perma bull you are. It's very, very tough to turn around to say, well, you know what? This market actually looks good. I feel good about being being long overnight, you know, based on what information, right? Uh, we had a crappy number a couple of days ago. We had another crappy number today. Uh, the bulls gave up the previous day's low. The bulls gave up the previous channel's low, that 30-20 
uh, that there was a great remount yesterday. And this is the lowest close in this whole formation in a very, very long time. And oh, by the way, now we're below this whole area that the breakout started. And again, if you believe in the theory, supply, supply, demand, and demand, then 3, 12, 50 uh, is the next area. Matter of fact, if you go start looking at all these indexes, you kind of see the same thing played out. Like semiconductors took out this channel, right? And next thing they did, they went into uh, rising support. So QQQ is a you know carbon copy. It's a mirror image of what happened with the semiconductors. Keep this in mind. The semiconductors are the ones who let us up. They let us down. They let us back up. And then they're starting bringing everything down. And if you do look at uh, a lot of setups today to the downside. You're going to see there's a lot of uh, semiconductor names, right? And XPI uh, looks like it's right to, about to fall off a cliff. Uh, you know, you have NVIDIA, very, very close. Again, it's just sat there in support two days in a row. One more day, this thing has, what, 20, 25 points of downside. There's a lot of room to the downside. So the semiconductors look very, very weak. The NASDAQ 100 members in general look very, very weak. Um, even a name like Coinbase today, just to give an example, even a name like Coinbase today that I really liked, right? Like I really liked this thing and I said, that, you know, I'll we'll, we'll show you the pivots in a second. You know, I think, you know, I thought if this thing needed to really clear out that 307, 308 level, it touched 307 perfectly and completely died in the vine. So buyers gave up. You could see it. Buyers completely gave up. Uh, and you go through all the indexes one by one. You kind of see it. The semiconductors, the spies, right? The spies touched uh, the 50-day moving average today, right? We haven't seen the 50-day moving average uh, since January, February, March uh, the 25th. Now, again, keep this in mind. Uh, the last time we hit the 50-day moving average, we closed on a green candle, which basically meant we touched this area and we closed higher than we opened. Today, it was a different story. We touched this level, closed at this level, and it was a red candle basically saying it was a lower close than the open. So we're kind of set up for tomorrow. Okay, It's very, very tough to uh, to have a debate some, you know, with somebody say, wow, this is, has to be a great overnight. You know, you have to buy the dip. You know, based on what? Right? Based on what? I mean, if you look at charts tonight, there's a lot of charts that are, you know, a day away from, you know, getting hit. I mean, really, really getting hit. Is it possible? Uh, is it possible we gap down tomorrow, reclaim levels and rally? Look, anything's possible, right? But just my game plan going into tomorrow, I'm sell biased. I mean, I'm, I'm sell biased until the market gives me uh, a reason uh, not to be sell biased. And if you start looking at charts from uh, different industry groups, you'll see it. You know, Boeing. Uh, Boeing looks like you know it's you know it's it's a magnet to this 214, uh, 215 level. You know bigger names, uh, you know big you know names like Amazon had this really great engulfing candle yesterday, but now it looks it's like a day away from giving up what another 45 to 70 points, right? That's a lot. Uh, Tesla uh, broke the previous day's low today, and it's, you know kind of a magnet here uh, to this lower channel here. There's a lot of names, right? You could go through a lot of names today. Uh, Etsy came out with you know some. You know, under desirable earnings uh, last week. And again, it's flagging. It held the same bottom channel here three times in a row. It's flagging. If it releases that, then maybe it tests the bottom low. So my game plan for tomorrow is obviously any strength. If we gap up tomorrow, anything, anything that's on my watch list today, uh, I will be watching for today's confirmation to the downside. And if whatever reason we kind of hold some sort of levels, then look, then, you know, I'm going to give the bears, you know, at least a couple of candles to, to prove me, uh, to prove me wrong. And if there's a couple of candles that the bulls start getting very, very aggressive and start reclaiming levels, then hey, we could always uh, switch back to the upside bias. But again, I, I don't see it, right? I don't see it. Again, I could be wrong, right? It's not going to hurt. It's not going to cost me any money to, to have an opinion and be wrong. But the way everything is playing out, obviously, there's a big line in the sand here uh, for the S&P 500, right? The spies, uh, this 404 level is definitely the line in the sand. You have Q's already broken uh, below yesterday's low. Any close below 319, you know, we closed you know, $3 below 319. So we're set up to the downside, right? Our job right now is to find uh, the best setups to the downside. Um, you know, today there was you know, several pivots to the downside. Uh, they got aggressive. Um, tricky, a little bit tricky day today just because, again, it wasn't, it felt like almost um, kind of a hangover. Uh, I think a lot of traders want to see if indeed we could rally back like we did yesterday and we didn't. So today was a completely opposite of yesterday's session. It felt like the bulls gave up very, very quickly and, and really didn't put up a fight. Uh, Alibaba, you have uh, earnings tomorrow pre-market. Obviously, it's going to affect uh, a bunch of names on the NASDAQ as well. So again, we'll see. You know, We'll, we'll definitely see. I mean, that's the best way of saying it. You, can't, uh, you have to have an opinion. You have to have a bias. You have to do your research. Uh, to play out uh, on that side of the market. And then, then you have to see uh, if everything confirms. So yes, I am definitely uh, sell biased, at least to start 
uh, the day tomorrow. And if things start, you know, firming up, you know, we have some names uh, to the upside, for example, that I'm watching as well, like RBLX, right? If the market turns, RBLX, you know, rested today. Had a nice res day. Uh, this channel is still on the table. That looks pretty good. And so if we rally, you know, I have some names I'm watching to the upside, like VTRS, for example, uh, nice looking chart as well, right? It's coming off the bottom here, uh, reclaim daily support. So there, there are some names you could you could trade to the upside, but uh, my initial game plan is definitely to the downside. I want to give the bulls, excuse me, I want to give the bears uh, the benefit of the doubt tomorrow. And if they do confirm, uh, things uh, could get aggressive. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots and, you know, Pretty, you know, pretty simplistic day here. I, I, I talked about it last night on the video and I talked about it this morning. I, I felt that for the majority of the day today, you're probably going to see a lot more chop. You're probably going to see a lot more contraction, uh, contraction cyclists contracting uh, channels. That's kind of when you saw it today. I think the, big, the biggest pull came after uh, I left for the day. So I, I didn't see how aggressively... Tesla got pulled up after the initial at 490, uh, 592, 593 pull. Uh, but you could see, you could definitely see how stocks kind of gave up. And the moral of the story is we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow, but I'm definitely sell by. So uh, again, here's the first pivot of the day. Uh, QQQ macro 319 yesterday's low. Again, that's the line in the sand. There's, there's certain times there's no reason uh, to have a debate. If yesterday's low was uh, if yesterday's low was the bottom of the channel, the rising wedge at 319, well, that's going to be the line in the sand. So here are the cues. As you can see here, here are the cues. It took out the 319, uh, traded to the low here pretty much at 316. I still believe if cues confirm tomorrow, it goes down to that 312 level. So good job for all you guys who are holding some cues uh, overnight. Uh, coin 307, 308 needs to build. They report Thursday, and it looked good for a while, right? This morning, it actually looked good, blah, 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 blah. Look at the high today, right? The 307. So it, it couldn't even take out this channel. Uh, would have been a, it would have been a really good trade if it would have taken out this 307, 308 level, traded right to uh, 306.98 and just kind of died on the vine uh, very, very quickly. Uh, RBLX, obviously, watching. I still like the 78 level tomorrow for RBLX, assuming if the market is good. Uh, GoGo never got to uh, 1185.12. Initially, I put FUBU on the watch list, uh, 22, 22, 20. It didn't make a difference. I, I made a note. Up above, it's you know it's too a little too extended, so I kind of pulled. It never got to 22 uh, anyway. Uh, Tesla, right? Tesla 598, 597. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Tesla, and they held up Tesla for pretty much the whole day, right? And then they finally gave up that 598 uh, right here. This whole channel here, the 598, 597 level. It went down to like 592 off that push, and then after I left, it took out that 592 uh, and put in a low all the way down to 586. So if you do still have some Tesla uh, overnight, you know, there's a shot, right? There's definitely a shot. You can see maybe uh, the pre-market lows from yesterday. We'll see, you know, we'll see what happens there, but there's, there's definitely a channel that we're gonna watch. Uh, NLOK, beautiful move here. You know, beautiful move, one of the very few moves on the long side that were good. Uh, NLOK, 23.75.24 uh, needs to build, right? So here was NLOK, really big move here. We talked about, we briefly talked about it last night in the video, but uh, NLOK it took out that uh, $24 level. It just absolutely exploded uh, all the way up into the 25s. Good call buyers came in uh, at the open as well. Uh, Amazon, uh, 31.74, big 60 minute support. If it builds below, can flush. There's one more area there, 31.65, to use as a guide just in case it holds. And here's Amazon, right? Here's the Amazon pivot. Here's the 31.74, right? So here's the 31.74 right over here. It took that out, went all the way back to 31.46. Before you know, 31.46, I believe that was me, the bottom of the channel I actually traded down to 31.33. But again, it still hasn't even taken out the previous channel's low. And if it does tomorrow, this has a lot more room down. So good job. Uh, for all you guys who traded Amazon. And I said, look, stay patient. Let the morning play out the way we talked about on morning notes. Let them pick a side. And they, you know, for a while, they were playing pinball, and they finally gave it up uh, towards the end. NLOK 25s. Uh, here comes Amazon. Take on the way down. Right, new lows on the queues. Obviously got hit. Uh, again, just never never got to that 307, 308 level. Amazon new lows. Da, 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 da. And that's it. And that's it. So I, I think I think going into tomorrow again, like I said, I'm I'm sell biased at least from the start. Um, I definitely want to see aggression from the Bears, right, to take control and really hammer you know the point home. And again, guys, just remember, 
there's no such thing as a bull or bear, right? There are traders that are doing this for a very long time. It's opportunists. There's nothing personal about these stocks. I love Tesla uh, as a company. I love Tesla as a stock. I trade Tesla long. I trade Tesla short. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's just taking advantage of channels. There's no such thing as a bad market. Uh, there's a bad process or a bad lack of process. The market is going to go up or down with regardless uh, whether you participate or not. So if you want to sit there uh, and, and sit there and, and, and bellyache talking about the stocks are going down, or you've ever seen stock prices fall, and, you know, you know, wake up. This is what the market is. This is anybody who's been trading for a long time. The market goes up. The market goes down. It's nothing personal. It's just you have to have a, a strategy or at least uh, a process that your money is safe. Whether you trade both sides of the market or not. That's your prerogative. Whether you're an active trader or you're a shareholder, that's your you know that's your defined lane. But again, just recognize, folks, we don't have uh, a linear bull market. It feels that way, right? But it, we, it, it, if you've been trading long enough, you kind of know, right? There's been periods of the market, periods of my career, ever since '99. There's really good runs for the market, and there's really bad pulls of the market. And again, this is not a big run. This is not uh, a big decline yet. This is just the market taking advantage of no catalyst. Earnings are pretty much out of the way. Uh, earnings were sold, no matter how good the report was. And this is just a kind of a, a ramification of what happens next. So we'll see, right? So we'll see. So that's it. That's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, get some rest. We should get some pretty good value tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field. Take care, guys.